بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قصيدة صريرة تصيف أمراض الجوفون الحمد لله الشفير الواحد القدير الذي يعطينا نور بصر Abd Ali al Usain ibn Abd Allah ibn Sina Bahi, also known as Evan Sina, was born in a small village near Bukhara, Uzbekistan in 980. In this time period, Europe was struggling through the Dark Ages. The Far East was thriving under the Song Dynasty, and the Islamic world was experiencing its Golden Age. Ibn Sina's father was a tax collector in the government, and like most civil servants, he encouraged education in his family. When Ibn Sina memorized the Quran, the Muslim Book of Faith, at the tender age of 10, his parents were aware their child was extraordinary. Tutors were hired to educate him, but in a matter of months, Ibn Sina had surpassed the knowledge of his teachers. By the age of 16, he mastered the disciplines of science, astronomy, geography, and engineering. A year later, he turned his attention to medicine. He said of the study that it is not difficult. He mastered the art quickly and made a name for himself in his hometown. Upon hearing of the young protege's depths of knowledge in medical sciences, the Caliph of Bukhara, Nuh ibn Mansur, asked the young man to cure him of a serious illness, which baffled the court physicians. Ibn Sina not only cured the caliph, but became a favorite to him, and was granted access to the royal library. This event sparked the beginning of Ibn Sina's illustrious career as a physician. Nuh ibn Mansur's library was one of the most advanced and largest in the world. The library acted as fuel for Ibn Sina's fire for knowledge. It is in this environment that Ibn Sina produced his greatest legacy, the canon of medicine. The canon of medicine is a one million word, 1,000 page encyclopedia. It has reference to over 700 herbs, 1,000 diseases, and countless ways to preserve health, some of it still considered valid today. It also includes discussions on breast cancer, other tumors, and dilation of the pupils, to mention a few. Gerard of Cremona translated the canon to Latin in the 12th century. It immediately became the chief medical text in education and reference throughout Europe. It displaced the works of Galen and was said to have influenced Leonardo da Vinci's works. The canon was described by Arnold C. Klebs, a Swiss physician, as one of the most significant intellectual phenomena of all times. The great text was used in European medical schools, such as Montpellier and Louvain, as late as 1650, being in the words of Dr. William Ulcer, the former physician-in-chief of John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, a medical bible longer than any other work. Today, the canon is used in hospitals in Europe and the Americas for reference and study, along with Ibn Sina's great work, The Book of Healing. The Book of Healing is a vast scientific and philosophic encyclopedia, only matched by its predecessor, the canon of medicine. The canon is undoubtedly Ibn Sina's most enduring legacy to humanity. Ibn Sina's vast knowledge and his unique discoveries contributed to many advancements in different areas. From medicine to poetry to science, his mark remains indelible. His poetry is well known in the Islamic world and highly praised for his use of quadrants. Most notable of these works is Medicine in a Poem that is 1,337 verses in length and details eye alignments to child rearing. Written in classical Arabic, the poem remains a standard for beauty, form, and content. In science, Ibn Sina's contributions include being the first to use a thermometer to measure the temperature of air, writing about inertia in the Book of Healing before Newton was even born, and providing a theory for the rainbow. In astronomy, he declared the stars self-luminous and noted Venus, not the Earth, was closer to the sun, as was commonly thought. 
Even Cena also was the first to classify simple machines into these categories, wedge, pulley, lever, screw, and windlass, a system still used today. Ibn Sina's philosophy influenced the intellectual perspectives of Shiism and Thomas Aquinas, who incorporated some of Ibn Sina's thoughts in Catholic theology. Ibn Sina also is mentioned in the general prologue of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer and the Inferno by Dante as one of the most profound physicians in the world, along with Galen and Hippocrates. These three physicians are noted as being the big three because they are the three authorities on medical theory and practice in the history of medicine. Evansina's legacies are a result of the immense knowledge he acquired by reading and studying a diverse range of subjects. All this knowledge he transferred into words on pages and eventually books. Ibn Sina completed his first major book at the age of 21. It is a 20-volume encyclopedia dealing with sciences, mathematics, and ethics. He spent his days in Nuh Ibn Mansur's library, reading and researching for his work. However, shortly after Ibn Sina completed the encyclopedia, his life would change forever. Ibn Sina lived in a time of great political turmoil. The Samanid dynasty was struggling to maintain power. When the inevitable conflict broke out, Bukhara was burned, and with it, the valuable royal library. Ibn Sina fled the devastated city in grief, as the two most influential people in his life were lost. His father had died in the turmoil, and the caliph was overthrown. Ibn Sina wandered for ten years. He finally settled in Georgian, near the Caspian Sea. Ibn Sina was attracted by the fame of its ruler, Shams al mu Ali al Hussein Rabus wa Mushur, also known as Kabus, who was a renowned patron of learning. Unfortunately, when Ibn Sina arrived, the famed ruler was murdered. His son seized control and left Ibn Sina with no post in government. In spite of the lack of a royal position, Ibn Sina settled down momentarily and lectured on logic and astronomy. Ibn Sina had many pupils that he mentored and influenced. Most notable of these is Al-Biruni, who was known to him in Nuh Ibn Mansur's court. Al-Biruni was greatly influenced by Ibn Sina's writings and became the first Muslim scholar to go to India. Ibn Sina's pupils were not only comprised of Muslims, but Christian intellectuals from Europe who disguised themselves as Jews in order to travel to Persia. All of his students referred to him as the Prince of Physicians because of his extraordinary skill in medicine. While in Georgian, Ibn Sina wrote the first part of the canon of medicine, his greatest legacy. However, Georgian proved not suitable to the physician, so he traveled to Isfahan, then Haman, in present-day Iran. Residing in Haman, Ibn Sina finished his two greatest contributions, the Canon of Medicine and the Book of Healing, under the patronage of Shams al dua the Bayadid Prince. Under the prince's patronage, Ibn Sina was appointed to court physician and twice as viceroy. Although court life was prestigious, he managed to remain in Haman until his death in 1037. At the age of 56, he was buried in a elaborate tomb in the city. Throughout his life, Ibn Sina was encouraged by friends to rest and live his life at ease, but this was not in his character to idle. Before he died, he said, I prefer a short life with width rather than a narrow one with length. And it is a European doctor who best sums up the great legacy of Ibn Sina by stating, Medicine was absent until Hippocrates created it. Galen revived it. Dispersed until Rhazes collected it. Deficient until Evan Sina completed it.